gonna itch me where it scratches how are y'all doing out there welcome to the freakers ball this is the freakers ball we are live i say we it's just me right now moose girl may be along in a little while but uh we'll, we'll, we'll uh, just uh, leave that open uh it's, it's up to her and her mood anyway welcome to the freakers ball it's friday night once again september 4 2020 first show of september here in uh the Corona world, Corona land. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a good one. I think I, I think it will be. I, they usually are, right? I, I mean, I enjoy it, so it's always a good one for me. Whether it's always a good one for you, that's up to you to decide. Anyway, welcome to the uh, show here, uh, and uh, hi and howdy to all the folks out there in the various places that may be tuned in, whether it's right here on reallibertymedia.com, on the Freakers Ball show page, or over there on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia. Those are where you get the video feeds. Or you can uh, tune in on the audio stream on Real Liberty, or RLM Radio, XYZ, RLM Radio. Yeah, it's not Real Liberty Media over there. But there's also the audio stream on reallibertymedia.com. And the audio stream is also available on uh, reallibertymedia.org. And, uh, where else? I don't know where else. Tune in, I think. Um, although, it, there may be an issue with the tune in thing. I don't know. Um, I got an email from a guy via the website, uh, yesterday, yesterday morning. And, uh, he said that he was having a little trouble, uh, connecting up his client. Whatever that, whatever that, uh, uh, I forget what he said. I, I think it was some kind of Apple thing or Mac thing. Ma Apple, Mac, same thing, right? Uh, anyway, so he was having trouble connecting up, and he said the tune-in thing wasn't wasn't helping him out either. So if you note, if you had noticed, if you do notice, on on the um, on on both uh, RLMRadio.xyz and RealLibertyMedia.com, as well as the pop-up player, I've added a little set of icons there uh, that you can use to tune into uh, various formats of the stream. Um, uh, which are the uh, the Windows uh, Windows Media Player thing, the uh, QuickTime, which I'm not even sure if that's even still valid, but QuickTime, uh, Real Player, which I'm again I'm not sure if that's still a valid player, um, and also the uh, the Winamp the Winamp logo, which is a PLS, which is generally useful for for most people. Anyway, I added those to the various uh, players uh, for for the audio stream there. And sent him an email saying, "Hey, check these out." And and apparently he did, and it works just fine for him now. So uh, anybody else that wants to use an uh, alternate alternative player, I guess, uh, instead of the HTML5 player that I that I use on on these various places, uh, it's available there now for you. So hooray for that! <laughs> Oh boy, what's going on here? Um, what's going on with all this election stuff I keep hearing about? Benoit says, "I have no idea. I, I'm who cares? It's an election. It's pointless, useless." Anyway, hi and howdy to the folks over here in the chat. Which, by the way, if you're not over here in the chat, which you can get to either on RealLibertyMedia.com or RLMRadio.xyz. Uh, or using your own client, connecting up to irc.fredo.net and jumping into pound pound Real Liberty Media, uh, any of those ways, uh, you, you can do it. You can f find yourself here with the rest of the chatters that are here with us tonight. Uh, so, uh, howdy. Let me just, just run down the list. I haven't been doing this, and uh, so let me go ahead and do that anyway. we got the barman and the beetle with myself and the moose girl. And uh, Miss Kate, how you doing, Kate? Uh, Anti and Asbo and Chelsea, Donnie, Miss Chloe, uh, Donna, Damn Van Mita, Gramsci, Grammy, how are you? Uh, Hansel, J. Dredd, uh, JJ's and Prince and Rob Works and uh, Rob, are you still awake? Uh, we got Trust No One, uh, Rome's there, Vanna White and Weatherdork, a couple other bots of mine, uh, Phantom and Ben, Ben Wow! The CC66, Miss Chloe again. We got two Chloes here, apparently. We got Cyborg Noodle and Ensive and Frumpy. 
uh, Matt WJ, Pwn Sauce, Smart Ass, The Holiest Roger, and anybody else that may be out there listening in, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Let's see, do I have any other RLM news besides the new uh, uh, player stream icon link thingies? Uh, Hal mentioned something. Hal Anthony, who uh, does the show Behind the Woodshed on uh, Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon o'clock Pacific, he mentioned something um, to somebody. Eh, I forget what it was. Um, but something about, oh, I could look right, 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 right quick over here on the tweeter, I think, um, and see what it was, because uh, I think that's where I saw his deal at. Uh, anyway, he was talking about what he's going to be talking about, or saying what he's going to be talking about, I guess, on uh, Sunday. And, uh, well, I don't know where it is. Anyway, he's going to be talking about something interesting on Sunday. That's what I remember. It was something interesting. And he'll be covering that on this Sunday. There's Rob in the in the muddy bubbler. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it as always, as always. Even if I don't always say so. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, well, just to get us going here, get us started. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it off with uh, three cover tunes by three different bands. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. And after that, I will be back and we'll talk about stuff. We. I always say we, right? Didn't I tell you that the other day? Um, <laughs> oh, that was on the uh, It's All Connected program. Uh, I was talking to Miss Circle, Circle, who's, who's doing the all, It's All Connected with me now on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a great. Uh, uh, people seem to enjoy it, I, I, I guess. They they said they did, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take their word for it and trust them that, that they did enjoy it. Anyway, we're kicking it off here with an Aerosmith cover by a band called Black Top Mojo. Rest in peace, Mr. Cornell. Yes, indeedy. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, um, that was uh, Leo Maraccioli covering Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun there. Before that, we had Judas Priest covering Fleetwood Mac's Green Manalisha with the two-pronged crown. That would be uh, Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac uh, <laughs> that did that originally. And we kicked it off there with a black top mojo covering Aerosmith's Dream On. Like I said, a uh, set full of covers there for you all. Uh, so uh, welcome to the uh, chat here uh, I am Lone Frog has joined us during that set, so uh, welcome, welcome to the show, welcome to the RLM chat, yeah, all that, great, all that great stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, let me uh, let me tell you a little story about a circuit breaker. <laughs> oh, oh, here's Moose Girl calling in. Hello. Hello. There you are. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hola. <laughs> Hola. How are you? I'm good. Hang on a second. All right. There we go. Okay. Good. Well, I was just yeah. a, I was I was just about to tell him a little story mm -hmm. about a circuit breaker. Okay. Do you, do you want to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, uh, about a week ago, I guess it was. I don't know when it was. Uh, maybe a little more than that. Uh, I had a, a circuit breaker that burned out, uh, the one that controls my air conditioning. And, and I had been having some trouble with it for a while. Uh, I had been hearing some, like, arcing and sparking there going on inside the uh, the panel. Um, so I'd go over there and I'd tap on it and stuff, and, and it seemed to, like, fix it. Uh, but apparently that wasn't the case. Um, it wasn't actually fixing it, uh, because once I, uh, got in there and removed the, uh, offending device, <laughs> I come to find out that, uh, uh if, if you're familiar with these kind of, uh, square D circuit breakers that, that go in, go in the, your, your panels there, uh, they, they have one clip on one side that goes on this rail, and these other, well, if it, on a dual, on, on a single, there would only be one clip, but a, on a dual, 
double double pull double throw uh single throw uh it it um, there's a, a cl- these clips on the other end that clip into this other on these little fingers i guess that would be the best way uh to call them that that pop out uh, or that that come out to to hold them in place there uh anyway when i took it out uh i find that the uh, contacts one of the one contact on one side uh was was totally burnt away and uh the uh, the finger had a had this black stuff on it uh from i guess melted metal <laughs> So and so anyway, um, anyway, I took it and I uh, started to look around on the interwebs so I could find one to order a replacement for that. And and I, I did find it on Amazon and and I went ahead and placed an order, but it was like uh, they were going to take until I don't know the twelfth or something of this month to get it here. And I was like, well, that seems that seems like an awful long time. So I went and checked out. Uh, they had them also on Lowe's, which is that home improvement place. Uh, familiar with them, Lowe's? Yep, yep. Okay. We don't have one here in Eau Claire, but they they have them in the cities. Yeah, I, I don't know where this one is, but whatever. Um, so so I went on the Lowe's site and they had it there um, mm-hmm. at uh, actually a better price, but then with shipping came out to the same price. Uh, but either way, uh, they had it. They had it in stock. So fine, I go ahead and order it. Boom. Oh shit. And and, and then I and then I, I get an email from Lowe's. Uh, later on that day, after I ordered it, it said, "All right, great, it'll be there tomorrow," which would have been Wednesday. Wow. I, w- which would have been Wednesday because I ordered it on Tuesday, and uh, I said, "Well, that's terrific," but I didn't really believe them because how are they going to get it from there to here in a day? Uh, less than a day, I ordered it in the afternoon. Right. <laughs> weird. Seems weird, right? So anyway, uh, uh, the next day rolls around and it's, it's not showing up, and so I look, go there to look at their. They're tracking and it says, oh, it'll be here, be here on Saturday the 5th. And I said, oh, okay, fine, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Um, anyway, I went back on there the next day and looked uh, to, to, to make sure it was uh, going okay. And it now says, oh, it'll be on there, I'll be there on Saturday the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? And, and it's like, well... It appears like it's they're, they ship with FedEx, um, and it appears like FedEx already has it, and it's in FedEx's place out there in Los Angeles, um, and so it's like, well, why would it take that long um, to for it to to get from I don't know there to here? I mean, we're only talking a few hundred <laughs> miles, uh, right? <laughs> So anyway, hopefully it'll get here sooner. Uh, I, I guess it's fine. I'm, I'm running it on a uh, a 20 amp breaker for the time being, uh, which is not really ideal since it's a, a, supposed to use a 30 amp breaker. But it seems to be doing okay. A couple of trips here and there, but uh, not, nothing too big. But uh, anyway, so uh, I guess I'll just wait. I, I don't know how, what else to do at this point. Um, Fun times, huh? Yeah, you know. <laughs> And uh, I guess you can blame this on the corona nonsense. I don't I know. I guess so. I, I have no idea. You might as well. Yeah, every, everything else gets blamed on it. Why not? Right. Yeah, I might as well just blame that, too. <laughs> it's it's the, cur- the curse of the corona and shipping. Yeah, no kidding. It's throwing a wrench into a lot of people's lives, you know? Yeah, well, I, um, I got, I got a, a yeah. text. I got a text from my sister mm-hmm. uh, earlier today. Mm-hmm. And and, and uh, she said, I hope you got uh, one of the things that I ordered you for your birthday. And and I did. And she said, but there was another one I ordered the same day. And it won't be there until next week. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so, and she ordered them from Amazon. So uh, I guess it doesn't matter where you order from. The shippers are the ones in control, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, w- w- once you get that, you know. Uh, the, the stuff I've been ordering. Um, okay. Oh, uh, Kate says to check uh, the payment uh, source that Lowe's doesn't take the money out until it's truly in transit. They already uh, charged me. They've already charged me for it. So they and they charged me for it. I guess the next day when they when they when I got the email or uh, saying saying that it would be there, but 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, they already charged me for it, so whatever. And it's not a big deal. It's just, uh, you know, <laughs> the waiting. Yeah, you know, and and the and the the changes of of delivery date and stuff. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not I mean, sure. It's not just an authorization. When I went into my to my bank account online here, uh, it showed it was in that that mode mm -hmm. in between. They knew about it and me being charged for it, but I haven't gone back and looked, so it, it could be there uh, now. Um, so, um. oh, okay. Well, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's with the shipper. They show it being with the shipper. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway, just just a little uh, whatever kind of thing that I have to, you know. So I I um went to River Falls yesterday because I had to pick up some rocks that I ordered, you know, from a rock shop. Okay. And I'm driving back, and it's like 9.30 at night. But anyway, um, I, I took a wrong turn, and I, like, had to go. I, I ended up doing a big circle to get back to where I needed to be. Anyway, I ended up getting on I-94 eventually to go back to Eau Claire. And about... I don't know, 10 miles down the road on 94, I can see there's a, a state trooper up there with his lights flashing, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know? And so as I get closer, I see that there's a, a huge pickup truck pulling this enclosed trailer. It looked like a horse trailer. I don't think it was a horse trailer, but it was similar to that. All right. It was that size of a trailer. All right. It, it, the truck's totally engulfed in flames. Great. And I mean, I had to go way over in the left lane. Like, it was on the right side, you know, on the shoulder. Yeah. But even being way over in the left lane, driving by that thing, because the traffic was all slowed down, you know. Um, There was a semi in front of me, and he went past it. So I'm like, okay. But I'm driving, and you could feel the heat of that thing. And then, like, there's a state trooper on scene there, and he was standing, like, 20 feet away from it. Yeah. You know, I don't think I, I didn't see anything on the news, so I don't think anyone was killed or anything. Okay. But it's just crazy. It's like that's not something you see every day, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's I, not. I mean, I was kind of worried driving by it with my car. I'm like, what if it like sparks or something, or you know what I mean, or blows up when I'm driving by it? Oh right, yeah. Well, you know, the, I mean, hit the gas, get on out of there. Right, yeah, I did. I went, I didn't gawk or anything. I just kept going. I was just like, because oh, driving up to it, like my hands over my mouth, I'm just like, oh my god. Yeah. You just don't see that every day, you know. <clears throat> but I, I was, I listened to the scanner a lot, and there was a car fire on 53 here in in Eau Claire, like a week ago uh -huh. or this week, I think it was. So I don't know what the deal is, but, like, how does that happen? How, how does the car set on fire? Too many movies, dude. That was a re the real deal. <laughs> that wasn't not mo no movie. I had to drive. I, I mean, because they had, like, part of the left shoulder was blocked up with, like, traffic cones and shit. And so I had to, you know, I, I pulled over as far into the left side as I could, you know, right. to get past this thing, but... The fire fire department was not on scene yet, so it just it had just happened. Anyway, um, oh, I was just gonna say to uh, Lone Frog out there, Tom's is good with no fluoride. There's also other brands that have um, no fluoride, but yeah, that's a good. It's smart if you're gonna use toothpaste, use non-fluoridated. Or make your own. Just make your own. Right, like what you use? What Graham? Uh, it's baking soda and coconut oil and. Just some mint, uh, mint uh, extract. Essential oil. I know extract. Just a mint extract. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, yeah, I... It's, it's about half and half. Uh, baking baking soda to, to coconut oil, and uh, then just as much mint as as you know to the flavor to your liking. Um, but uh, yeah, right, it, right. it works great, and um, I, I mean it's. As far as price wise, it's just, it's nothing, you know. <laughs> so it's probably cheap. I guarantee it's cheaper than actual toothpaste. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you know, baking soda is really, really cheap, and and coconut oil is right. really cheap, and 
The, 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 the expensive part, of course, is is the, is the mint extract, which is three or four right. three or four bucks for a bottle. But but you only need like a couple of drops. And no, I I use about half a, half a thing. Oh, you do? Oh, you put that much in there? Okay. Yeah, I mean, because you know it's a pretty good, it, it's dense stuff, uh-huh. and um, you just have you got to keep it in a. Uh, Fairly cool, fairly airtight fairly, well, uh, of course airtight. But I, yeah, I use yeah. like a little. Well, it's not Tupperware, but it's similar to Tupperware thing. Right, right. Um, uh, but it, but it's got to be fairly cool because ba- ba- uh, coconut oil uh, turns to basically liquid at around seventy three degrees or so. Yes, so, I noticed that. Yeah. And and if it's too cold, uh, then it's uh, it's hard as a rock. So. <laughs> Right, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you got to keep it in a fairly climate controlled thing. But your bathrooms are usually cool. Right. Cool yeah. at, at, and not not cold. So, uh, right. it, You know, assume, assuming you you're not in a house without heat or air conditioning. Right. <laughs> depending I on mean, where. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, depending on where you live. I mean, if you live in San Diego, it's not a problem. It's always the right temperature. But right. Mo- yeah. Most yeah. people don't. So. <laughs> Right. Most yeah. people don't live in San Diego. Right. I mean, it's part of California, so right there. Right. right. Yep, yep. That, that's, a, that's a big black mark on their name. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> I know we, we've been talking about this for a while this year, but people are finally getting a clue and leaving the major cities, um, like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I think it's the first time Manhattan has had open rentals in like twenty years. Let's see, I might have a story. Yeah, um, I mean, I, anyway, it, I, it's the big cities are going down, dude. I don't know how else to word it other than that. I, I, that's what it seems like, anyway. Yeah, it seems that way. Um, but uh, when I heard New Jersey is having a bigger exodus than New York, even. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Which I don't, you know, I don't know why anybody lived in New Jersey in the first place, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I had a story about it, but I, I don't see it here. Oh, okay, uh, that's okay. Because it, it may have been from a while ago. Uh, yeah, in which, in which case, it's somewhere hidden down further in my list. Buried. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the, so a lot of the, a lot of the big cities, people are saying. Enough! Let me out of here. Um, and and you know, can you blame them? Uh, no, I can't. I don't blame them at all. No, yeah. I don't. Rent yeah. is outrageous. Right. In, these pla- in New York City and L.A., you can't. Rent is so off charts; it would make your head spin, dude. Yeah, yeah. And and just I mean, that, and, and 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 the tyranny, the tyranny being pushed right uh, there. Is far yeah. worse, far worse than it is out here in the rural areas. Right. Um, you know, the, the 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 less people you have in your town, the less chance you're going to have anybody complaining that you're not following all of the governor's or mayor's mandates, which uh, they stack on top of each other. You know, uh, the, the, right. gov- the governor of whatever state says, "You will do this." And then the mayor says, "Yeah, you'll do all that. You'll do this too." Uh, and then they right. shut, they shut down all your businesses, and uh, it's crazy in those places. So, if you can get out of the cities, well, I've been saying that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we have. I've been saying it too. I live in a city, but it is not a major city. Right, it's, right. I mean, if I drive five miles out of town, you know, if I go south or north. I'm in the country. Yeah. Five miles. Right. So, I mean, I'm surrounded by farmland here. This yeah, no, I, 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 I live in the city. It's the city city of Moriarty. I would like, call that a town, though, Grant. Well, I, but it's called a city. They call it a oh, city. Oh, I know. It's incorporated and everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Do they have cops there? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's actually a, a Moriarty uh, police department. They have okay. I don't know three three cars I think. What do they do? Just drive around town all day? I I I don't know what the hell they do. Um, <laughs> I, I, some sometimes I'll hear a siren going up Route sixty six. Uh-huh. You know, 
And, and I don't, you know, it's hard to tell whether it's the fire department or. Uh, so do you have? There's a P, actual building, a police station. Well, there? it's it's a, they're in the city building. The, well, okay, the, the, yeah, the, the, that's the, how a lot of towns do. Yeah. Yeah, the city building holds the, the DMV, the cops, and all of the like. The county boys too. No, the county's got a different thing. They're they're in. Oh, in, okay. Yeah, they're they're down the road a bit. Estancia, oh, okay. they're in Estancia. That's oh, okay. The, that, that's the county seat. But, mm-hmm. um, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's usually but, where but there, the but there are, boys but, are at. Yep. But but there but there are also Torrance Sheriff Department. Torrance, okay. Torrance, Torrance County Sheriff. Torrance Department. County. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really hardly see the see the cops around much at all. I saw one a couple of weeks ago sitting mm-hmm. like uh, behind a, a sign somewhere, like waiting for. Somebody to go speeding down Route 66. Speeding by, yep. Yeah, which which we get, and and you'll 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 like hear a motorcycle or something sometimes zipping mm-hmm. down down Route 66, obviously going more than 40 miles an hour, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is the speed limit out there. Um, through town, right? Yeah, yeah, through town. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You live right on Route 66. I'm about you know 50 yards from it. <laughs> Basically, right there, Grim. I, I, well, I have between me. 50 yards. Well, between me, there's a there's a vacant lot, and then and uh-huh. then there's the uh, the little RV place there. These, they they sell all these RVs over there. Mm-hmm. And then that that's right. Yeah, that's sitting right on Route 66 there. Route 66. Okay. Yeah. Route. Yeah, I call it Route 66. I don't know. You say uh, it, it doesn't matter. It means the same. It's the same word. The word means the same thing. And it's spelled the same way. It is. It is. It's, English is so messed up, dude. I mean, seriously. Yeah. English is messed up language. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just been a crazy year. It's already September now. I know. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And I went to an appointment yesterday, and the lady that was there talking to me, um, she's like, she had her mask on at first, and she goes, she's at her computer, and she's trying to do something on there, and she rips off her mask. She's like, I'm so sick of these masks. We're all sick of these masks. She's like, you don't have to wear one if you don't want to. I'm like, fine, I don't care. I don't want to, you know? She's yeah. Like, we basically just wear them so the, cus- the, the patients feel safer. She's yeah. like, we don't really, you know. She's like, and then she says something. She goes, and I had a funny feeling uh, the second week in November – it's going to be not a thing anymore. I'm like, yeah, I have that feeling too. Pretty, like pretty darn sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, it's just, they they rule, rule, when they first roll, rolled out this whole lockdown shit, Yeah. it was the 15 days, right? Yep. Well, uh, we're now going on months now, okay? Oh, yeah. We're, we're... So their 15-day crap was a bunch of shit. Of course. It's like, and, and you're just going to keep ramping this up, and that's what they did. Go ahead. Well, and that's, uh, that's, 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 it's basically, uh, and that's what this, this first article I have uh, lined up here uh, is, is about. It's uh, the, the more they can get you to be mm-hmm. afraid and fear, the more compliant you will be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 and if you talk to the average person out there, people like, your parents, for example, uh, they 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 believe believe it, don't they? Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Yeah, and and there's and that's a large. They do. It's yeah. a it's a large portion of the population. They they listen to whatever they listen to CNN or who knows, NBC. Right. Those people that 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 keep on pushing the freaking lie. Uh, and, right. And, and so as long as they can keep you in fear. Then they can keep you know, keep control over you, and not only that, but these little tin pot dictators like your governors and mayors, yeah, they've got more power than they ever had, and they do not want to let it go. They, no, they, they don't. They are freaking loving it. Oh, they're um, loving it. <laughs> so, um, to, to ever to ever uh, see them uh, see that kind of thing go on, man, to to, to get them to relinquish that power. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, a- a- anyway, this this, uh, this uh, first article I got, it's it's mm-hmm. posted over on uh, climatism.blog. 
And uh, the title is COVID-19 equals climate change, colon, the more afraid you are, the more you will accept. Right. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there was a that uh, Tucker Carlson guy uh, oh, was talking okay. about this or something, and there's a video of him here talking about it. Uh, anyway, it says, for Dr. Tedros and Bill Gates, pandemic and climate change share a very different connection. Both are useful pretexts for mass social control. Both are essentially unsolvable crisis they can, uh, they, that they can harness to bypass democracy and force powerless populations to obey their commands. That was a Carl, Tucker Carlson quote there. If you watch anything today, it says here, watch this. It's uh, T Tucker Carlson ties in the obvious COVID-19 is nothing more than another excuse to control you and your family. A condensed version of the climate change scam that apparently failed to uh, control uh, destroy your life fast enough. Um, so hey, I'll just give you the. the Did I yell shut up? Did you hear me? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, okay thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, Matt. Down there playing video games. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, Matt. All right. Good. Shut the hell up, boy. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> so anyway, it was, a, it was a pretty interesting little video. I, I don't know, really know much mm -hmm. about this Tucker Carlson guy. He's on which network? Fox. He's on Fox. Oh, okay. That's what that video shows. It's a Fox News clip. Oh, okay. Um, and he looks angry. He looks angry. And, and, oh, yeah. And, and, and so they've got, like, you know, the little still uh, there of, of the video. Um, but I, I watched it the other day. It was, it was actually pretty good. So... Um. <laughs> so shut up, Matt. Thing. Oh, go ahead, girl. I'll just say, shut up, Matt. <laughs> yeah, thank you. He can't hear you because I have him on the headset. But, um, yeah. one thing I'm going to say that I've noticed, and I don't think it's a new thing. I think it's 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 been a pr an issue for a while. Is these kids go to these public? Whatever school education you get in this country, be it home school, public, or private, you're still, unless you're home school, that could be different. Let's just talk public and private schooling, okay? All right. The curriculum is, okay, for one thing, they don't teach history enough. And the history that they do teach, they just glaze over everything. And you don't, so when these kids, they go to college, and they graduate college, and guess what? They still don't fucking know any history. Right. Unless they specifically are a history major or specifically taking history classes, and even then, like I said, the, the, where they're getting their information, it's been gl glossed over and glazed over. They don't, it's not, it's not real. And you know, part of it is, but not they don't tell the whole story. They just tell part of the story. You know what I mean? Sure. So then when you get these kids graduating and they get jobs, let's say in journalism, okay? Okay. They have no reference point because they don't know any of their history of this country. And they're 20 or 23 or 24, whatever age they are. And they're freaking clueless and they have this huge debt that they have to pay to this some college or university and they don't know shit yeah it's like what the fuck did you pay for exactly you know what are you paying this exorbitant amount of money for to learn a bunch of uh bullshit you know it's just like and, and party. Learn how to party and do beer bongs and shit. Hell yeah! Oh. You know, <laughs> keg stands, whatever the fuck. That's, you know what I mean? I mean, I get it. There, I'm not saying education's a bad thing. I would never say that, ever. But what I'm saying is what is being taught isn't all of it. It's not all of it. And most of it's wrong. Yep, and most of it's incorrect. Yep. So this is another way that they control us. To be divided, you know, that's how they divide us. They divide us so many ways, you guys, you know. And when you fall for that, 
you're playing right into their hand. Yeah. When you fall for their shit, you're playing right. You're doing exactly what they want you to do. Yeah. And it's so sad, especially in election year and this year with all this shit that's gone on this year. It's so. It's, it's yeah, I don't know. It's right. sad's the right word for it, but oh, it's I know. just ridiculous. Yes, yes, it is. I mean, I don't know. It, it, anyway, we're getting some. Uh, we're getting. Dark. We're we're getting some reports from Rome's here in the chat. I see that. Yeah, I've seen his comments there. Yep. Chaos in Rochester, New York. Louisville and and stuff about to happen in Louisville. So, I mean, okay, so the Louisville, the Breonna Taylor thing. Yeah. All right. How come those cops that killed that girl have? What, what you know what happened with her? They tried to tell her boyfriend to like implicate her. Right. So they wouldn't be so guilty, right? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't blood. understand. Well, she was in her bed in her underwear. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is what they do. Sure. They're trying to give the boyfriend, because he's still alive, okay? Yeah, yeah. They're trying to give him a deal by, oh, well, we'll give you a deal if you implicate her for what we did, for, right. for being involved in drugs or whatever, the, whatever the charge is. Right. You know what I mean? And he told him to go like, to hell. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And so that one didn't work. That tactic didn't work in this case. And... The body cam thing? Yeah. Two of them, at least, they all had them on, I'm pretty sure. Right. But apparently, they were, you know, and this happens all the time. Oh, they weren't on at that time. Exactly. Or we lost that footage. Yeah, that, that footage is gone. Yeah, it's like, come on. How convenient. Okay, the body cam thing, I don't I don't like the body cam idea. I, I don't like it. Because they can turn it off. Well, that that's the problem, is they should never be able to turn it off. And any of them that ever turn it off should be immediately fired. Right. Like, that should be one of the regulations that you have to follow. If you turn off your body cam, you better have a damn good fucking reason, motherfucker. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, otherwise, hopefully. they're a joke. Okay? Sure. Body cams are a joke. They haven't helped people at all. Uh, and they're, they, uh, yeah. it's, they're kind of a joke anyway, because they could just, like, put their hand in front of it or something. Right. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know. they, could, they could block it, or they could have another... You know, there's, there's all kinds of ways that they can get around it right. when they're doing bad stuff, which is all the right, time. Right, right. So. Um, and it's just, okay, to me, this is about police brutality. But it's been corrupted and co-opted and been twisted and turned and turned into a race issue. Sure. Okay? And I get it. In certain places... The pe the cops arrest more people of color or whatever, you know, statistically more. I get that. But in rural areas like where I live in Wisconsin, yeah. there's not a lot of black people. So it's not black people that they're doing this to. It's no. white people that they're doing it to. Exactly. So or to anybody. So about race is, 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 is stupid. They, 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 they could not care less about your race. If right. You're, if, you're not, if you're not one of them, you're a piece of shit. Yep. That, that, that's what can, it comes they, down to. Oh, sorry, Grim, what did you say? I just said that's what it comes down to. Right, and they have been given way too much power to act without impunity, which is ridiculous. Yeah. They need to be held accountable for Brianna Taylor's death because that was murder. It was murder, flat-out okay? murder, flat-out right. murder. And why heads haven't ruled on this one yet? I don't know. Why has there not been any arrest? I don't know. But this isn't her, it, this isn't the only case, but it's just a high profile one. Yeah. You know, that's why this shit's going down in Louisville, not because of politics. It started because of Brianna Taylor. Okay? In Louisville. That's where it happened. Right. The Brianna Taylor case. I mean, right. yeah, okay, the George Floyd thing in May, that that started the whole country erupting basically sure and i don't know if you guys are aware but the odd time he was high on fentanyl i don't i'm just saying i'm not i'm just putting that out there all right 
The odd, he was on fentanyl. Well, okay? you know, you know, there's uh, there's other stuff about that whole thing. There is. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, there's there's pictures of him uh, being pinned down there on the ground, and he's got yep, uh, and he's got uh, hair on his head, and then they're putting him on the stretcher, and he's totally bald. Oh, uh, see, yeah, yeah, I don't know, I, yeah, yeah. So it's like, what what what's going on here? Is it? I mean, is it even the same guy? Because the the one they're putting on the stretcher. Right. Uh, looks exactly like this this uh, mock, mock up medical dummy. Oh uh, really? Yeah. Oh. So oh, God. there's there's questions of, of whether or not it was right. Even... I've heard people say it's a psyop. I don't want to say it's a conspiracy yet, but there are a lot of questionable things yeah. regarding that whole deal. Okay. There is. There are. There definitely are. But yes. But it got all the play, and uh, you know. Uh, now it's it's like you said that one guy um, who who shot himself started all that that muck going on up there. Where was that in Seattle? Yeah, what, what, which one are you talking about? It was a, it was a guy he shot himself through the oh, head. That was in Minneapolis. Oh, it was in Minneapolis. Okay. Yeah, uh, they, they, and they, they and it leaked on social media that the cops did it, so that created another riot. Well, it didn't even take that. If if you watch the video. Of the guy doing it. It's, he shot himself. He shoots himself in the head, and then right. he falls down on the ground, and, and a cop runs over there, and then some other guy walks right. up and sees this dead, this guy that is shot through the head. And it's this, not the cop did it. And, and there's a cop there, and he's like, you killed him! And you hear him on the, on the, on the recording, on the video. Uh, uh -huh. And he says, you killed that guy! And, and, and Yeah, and, which, obviously, if he was... There a few seconds before that, and saw the guy shoot himself. That wasn't true. That the cop didn't do it, right? Right, right. So, uh, you know, there's. <laughs> I mean, and that started a whole. And then I, I, because the guy that killed himself killed another dude in a parking garage. Okay, and that's why he killed himself because he knew he was going to get caught or whatever. You know, right? Who, who knows what was going on with him, but. That's what they are at. He was being looked for, looked for. Yeah, and, and he, even for. Uh, that that dude up there in Portland that shot the Trump guy or whatever. Yep. And then he fled. No, he's dead, too. Yeah, he fled to Washington, and apparently he started some kind of nonsense with the cops there, and the cops killed him. Last night, he's dead. Yeah, but, I, but it was, uh, from what some of the stuff that I've read, it was like he wanted to be killed by them. He he knew. Yeah, that's what. So well, Clyde Lewis talked about it because it happened while Clyde was on air. Yeah. Like the story broke. Yeah. So he like totally talked about that from then on. Right. And he said that um, it's been said that it was suicide by cop. Yeah. I mean, there's that that thought is floating around up there. You know what I mean? Right. And we don't have video footage of that, but Right. We don't have confirmation of that. I we don't, this just happened last night. So, but it is the person that killed that guy in Portland. Right. Right. And okay, so apparently the guy that was killed last night, the shooter, he apparently isn't right in the head and necessarily and he um Told a complete lie about how it went down in Portland. Oh yeah, yeah, I heard. When the, you look uh, at the video, you just see him standing there, and no one else is around but the dude he shot. Yeah. But then he comes out. He says, "Well, I'm sure my friend would have been killed if I hadn't done what I did." It's like, dude, that's not that's not true because there is no one around your ass. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. When you killed this guy. Yeah. Well. well and and I get it, you know, the things going on, the shit's going down in Portland, and then you get this Trump caravan of these big old trucks coming through, and they're shooting paint guns. It's like, come on, you guys. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you're asking for trouble. Absolutely. You're asking for, anybody that goes there is asking for trouble. Okay. Oh yeah, what you don't know what the fuck some psycho is gonna do. Right, you know, right, right. You don't know if you're going to get shot by a cop, by a per another person, by a fucking rubber bullet, which isn't really a rubber bullet. It's just an actual bullet coated in plastic or rubber that will fuck you up. Oh, yeah. Big time. 
Yeah. Um, so you're just asking for trouble. Right, like that like that, that kid in Kenosha. You know. Yep. What the he, hell? His mama drove him there, though, because she's, you know, all on board with it, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's questionable, too, because you have to be like, okay, the the first night happened, and then some group or whatever, patriot group or militia group or something, put out, like, a notice on social media that they were calling for patriots to come and help Kenosha, help protect these businesses, even though those businesses, I guarantee you, didn't ask for that. Right. Okay? Right. They just took it upon themselves. Oh, well, we better fucking go there. Sure. You know, with our AR-15s and protect these businesses. Yeah. You know, no, you, this is the problem. Part of the problem with all this shit is people are now taking the law into their own hands. They're being execution, they're being judge and jury and executioner. Right. Well, see, the thing you is. You know what I mean? The thing it's is. Like, okay. The, the thing is, to be, okay, first, first he was, he was 17, so he shouldn't have had the gun according right. to the laws of whichever yes, place. The law. But... Which, I, which I, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think anybody that, Whatever age, if as long as they're able to handle a weapon, should be able to have whatever weapon they want. Um, Wait, with the proper training or whatever. You well, know? well, whatever. What, yeah. Proper well, training. I mean, yeah. if your dad shows you how to use a gun, then you have proper when you're training. Eight or ten. Yeah, then then you have proper training. That's proper training, right? Yeah. Okay, so whatever. Um, so I, that's that's beside the point. I'm just saying that according to the the laws, which most of these bootlickers that are mm-hmm. that are supporting uh go and bail out this town um mm-hmm. they they should be able to walk around uh either uh, you know open carry or concealed right. whichever they prefer of course mm-hmm. you know there's they pass all these stupid things so right. that, that should all be fine and he should be able to walk up and down the street um uh you know with that, without ever having an, encountering a problem, maybe it swung over your back on like a strap. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever. you're carrying in your, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're carrying in your hands like a like you see right. soldiers do. Um, yeah, uh, whichever it doesn't matter. Yep. The, the, you should be able to walk around with that without mm-hmm. encountering an issue. But right. my understanding is this kid ran uh, towards the thing to to he did to to to, to get into something, and he then did. And, I was and, watching it happen and attacked somebody. And then after yep. after he attacked that person, then people yep. started chasing after him. Him, right? So, That's so, exactly what happened. And, and then and then he he fell to the ground, and they were attacking him. And he started right. shooting. Right. Uh, so okay, at that point. So when Trump said what he said, he I, is incorrect because he left out the first part. He just talked about the second part, where this was after he shot and killed the first person. And people were trying to get him. Because they wanted to apprehend them to stop them from shooting another person. Yeah. So <laughs> I, whatever so, yeah. you know. So so the, the thing is, um, mm-hmm. he shouldn't have been there uh, in the first right, place. Right. He should not have been there uh, be, be, because of <laughs> uh, uh, he just he just didn't belong there. I don't uh, care if it's twenty minutes away and you live in Illinois. You cross state lines. Your mama drove you there because you saw some plea on Facebook that wasn't even confirmed you 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 decide sorry you decide to take it upon yourself to go there as a protector oh and then he like they interviewed him on a video before this all went down he's a medic it's like dude yeah some medic you are yeah so uh, anyway and he's walking down the street after they interview him going medic medic it's just like, and he's carrying an AR-15. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. Right. Uh, a- anyway, uh, uh, at, at some point, I, it, it does become self-defense, but it did. But it wasn't. The fact but it, but it, should, it should, you shouldn't have been in a situation to require the, the, the self-defense exactly. in the first place, because you're the one that started the shit, and and. He did. He ran right because he heard windows being broken in right. cars, and he ran there so. to that. And then he saw that guy, and all of a sudden you hear him go, "Fuck you!" <laughs> and he shoots him. Yeah, and I, I'm all for I'm all for citizen patrols or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm I'm not for for people going out there and starting violence. 
um, right. it, it, to, to, to do that. So Yeah, he, <sighs> he had no, the, okay, maybe the second and the third, the second person he killed, the third person he shot, they can say it was self-defense, but they won't be able to prove self-defense on that first one, dude. No. There's no way. No. Because no. he ran there. He put himself there. He could have just stayed back and, you know what I mean, minded his own business. But, no, he he's like, oh, they're breaking windows. Okay, breaking car windows doesn't justify murder, murdering somebody, okay? It certainly does not. I'm not saying that breaking car windows is good, but is that a reason to kill somebody? No. <laughs> no, it is not. No, it is not. Anyway, it's a whole messed up situation. It is. It's all messed yeah. up. We're going to play some more music here. Okay, let's do that. No, I don't, I don't it's know. It's such a great year, hasn't it, Grim? Oh, it's just been awesome. Hasn't this just been awesome? It's just awesome. Now, I don't know. Great it, for concerts and festivals and, you know, oh, yeah. uh, Oktoberfest. Yeah. Can't do none of that shit. Just, just no, everything. No fun. You can't, no, you can't have any fun at all anymore. Yeah. You can't. It sucks. Right. Fun is out outlawed. Uh, um, anyway, I, I, I don't, I don't know if any out there all are indul indulging in adult beverages this evening. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you're not, George has a message for you. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Maiden there, number of the beast. Oh, man, I used to rock out to that so hard. <laughs> way, way back <laughs> in the 80s. All right, before that, we had uh, the Doors with Rider, Riders on the Storm. That there was a uh, Hansel request. Thank you for that, Hansel. And we kicked it off with George Thoroughgood. George Thoroughly Good. If you don't stop drinking... I'm going to leave. <laughs> oh, boy, that's some rock and roll, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, good rock and roll there. Uh, all, of, all of that. All of those, all of that. So, uh, oh, It should be, if you don't start drinking, I'm going to leave. That's that's what it was. <laughs> oh, I thought you said stop. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, no, that's George. George. George enjoys his alcohol. <laughs> Different, uh, okay, so what happened with the Maritowana? Mar Maritowana? How do you say that country's name, Grim? I don't know, but what are, what are you talking about? What, what, what are you talking about? An oil spill that happened um, recently in pristine waters. Um, Meritus, Meritus, Meritius. I don't know how you say. I don't know how you say it. Anyway, I'll post this link. I just posted the link there. The country of marijuana? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, marijuana. But <laughs> um, anyway, it was a pretty devastating. And apparently now it, it, it's it been found out that it went off course for some reason. And it collided with a tugboat or something. Oh, the tanker. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, about that. Yeah. Um, and, but they uh -huh. said the, uh, they said the, uh, no oil. Tank, I mean, the, uh, uh what do, you, what do you call it? The, the compartment that holds all the oil. What do, what do you call that? Yes. Yeah, the hull? <laughs> no, there's a name for it. Anyway, oh, apparently okay. that was fine. Um, so, uh, uh, but well, it did leak oil. Okay, it well did. then then maybe this is either a different story than the one I heard, or something happened since I heard about it. Yeah, it, it, it August 8th, 2020, CNN, Merit, Meritius... Meritism. Oh, okay. This is a it's newer one. It's facing a state of environmental I mean, emergency. That, that's after an old... a rick ship right, began that... breaking up, spilling right. into the Indian Ocean. Okay, this is an older one then. Okay, no, this is a recent one. This happened well, August eighth. August, but but today's September fourth. Oh, so what, what? Which one are you talking about then? I, I don't know. There was another. There was another oil ship that apparently caught on fire. And, and, and oh, this okay. I haven't heard about that one. Then. All right, I, I, I didn't. Sorry really, for the confusion there. That's all right. <laughs> I didn't pay too much attention to it, but uh. okay. But anyway, I haven't heard much. I mean, it's on CNN here, August eighth. So the mainstream media in the U.S. did cover it. 
Um, but it was a major like oil spill in the Indian Ocean. Okay. So yeah, you know. Anyway, I just we were talking about in the chat. That's how we got on that. I got on that subject, but um. Anyway, um, have you heard of agorism, Grim? Agorism. Or agorism. Agorism, yeah, sure. Agorism. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah. saying it wrong. <laughs> uh, it's, ba- it's ba- basically vol- voluntarism, vol- voluntarism. Okay. It's, it's a saying, so, you know, mm-hmm. there, there's there's a, a lot of places where the agora is like the, the marketplace. Market. Yeah, it's the marketplace. Yeah, market. Where people mm-hmm. trade without, you know, freely. Mm-hmm. Right, and I just I, I I like the idea of it. I mean, okay, so I'm just gonna read this. Well, you're you're this you're, you're you're a voluntarist, so it's called agorism dot info. It okay. says then in, in the overview it says agorism is a revolutionary market anarchism. In a market anarchist society, law and security would be provided by market actors instead of political institutions. Yeah. Agorists recognize this, that situation cannot develop through political reform. Instead, it will arise as a result of the market processes. Sure. As the state is banditry, revolution culminates in the suppression of the criminal state by market providers of security and law. Market demand for such service providers is what we, will lead to their emergence. Development of that demand will come from economic growth in the sector of the economy that explicitly explicitly shuns state involvement. So I don't know. I just found this site because I was listening to all people blast in the past. Adam Kokesh, he's still out there doing his thing. Um, his website is Adam versus the man dot com. Right. Um, if you're interested, he I've met him in person. Very down to earth. Very smart. He's an ex uh, military guy. And he's, I don't know what where what he where he falls on the spectrum politically anymore, but um, I like him. I I think he's a he's a cool dude. All right. And cool. he 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 does a radio show. He's not afraid to put himself out there. He's been arrested like <clears throat> so many times. Right. Right. For like standing up for stuff. Yeah, and you got to give him credit. He's an ex vet. He fought combat in Iraq. Okay, two tour, two tours, I believe. Yeah. So anyway, um, he he that's what started him. Being in that conflict is what actually started him on like the freedom path or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. The anti-statist, anti-government path, because he's like, this is bullshit. What I'm doing here. You know. Sure. He got fucked up by it. He didn't, he, yeah, you can hear his story. His story's out there somewhere. But anyway, he's still around doing his thing. So even we are, Grim. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're still around doing our We're thing. still here. I mean, and we actually, or not we, just not only us, but we actually, you actually, that created RLM, you must have seen the future, dude. I don't know. Or something. You must have had a vision. I don't know. Because you're like, fuck this commercial radio shit. I'm just going to do my own thing. And I'm not going to have pay for no advertising or have advertise. You know what I mean? It just happened. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it... but seriously, all the... Okay, so some of the bigger names, like Joe Rogan and shit... Yeah. They're in big battles and shit, legal battles and battles against these social media platforms. Yeah, you know. Quite, you know, well, well, what, and Clyde Lewis is like, no. So he did what basically what you did, Grim, is he's like, fuck this. We're making our own site, and we're gonna, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, once you once you start getting money involved, it becomes a problem. Right, because you get these advertising and all this crap. Well, even even without that, I, I mean, you know, whatever, backers or whatever. People that, yeah. that that want you know you want you to fit it an agenda, so mm-hmm. I, I you know what I we I, <laughs> I I'm glad that RLM developed the way it did and it remains mm-hmm. the the tiny size that it is. It, uh, right. It, it it you know I wish more people had you know the uh, the idea of of, of freedom of liberty. 
mm-hmm. you know, and 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 lived by it and thought about it and uh, right tried tried to tell others, but you know, others aren't going to listen. But that, that's besides the point. No, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what you can do though, what and we've been talking about this for years. <clears throat> you can start. You can trade and barter. Sure. You can. You're free to do that. Right. I'm free to do, you know, we're, all of us, we're, you, you're free to do that. You're free to, like, trade goods and services. Yeah. You know, um, and I think it would be nice if more and more people had that mindset. I think more and more people are starting to have that mindset. Well, I and think they, more and they, more, they, you know, I, I hope. I, you know, I, I, I think it's. I think it's going to be required more and more. I uh, do too. Uh, yeah. as, as, From what's as, coming economically oh, in the yeah. country? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As everything falls apart. Anyway, um, not exactly on that and not exactly on agorism, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, just on the state, I guess, and, and their mm-hmm. interference in many things, uh, such yeah. as these insane lockdowns, um, comes this. From one of them, one of one of the clap outlets, the mainstream outlets, okay. Reuters. Uh, corporate lame-ass propaganda. Yes, the clap. Uh, mm-hmm. From Reuters, from Reuters. Fact box. Americans on lockdown pay more for groceries, clothing, and appliances. Uh, so you have, yeah, we do. Uh, you, you well, you'll be surprised at some of these prices are increasing. Okay. Well, maybe not surprised, depending on what you've okay. done. Reuters, right. uh, Hammer Reuters. Um, <laughs> uh, U S shoppers have been paying more the last year for a range of consumer goods during the Corona pandemic, uh, from eggs to deli meat to running shoes. According to Reuters, Hammer Reuters analysis of the latest pricing and sales data. For example, eggs prices rose sixteen and a half percent to two dollars and forty five cents in the four weeks ended August twenty second. I believe that. Uh, I believe that. that. That's according to Nielsen data. In the same okay. period, uh, dollar sales, dollar sales. Uh, I guess that's overall amounts. Dollar store sales or no, no, dollars? no, no. no. The, the sales oh, okay. in dollars of this of the eggs. Uh, Rose eighteen point six percent, and volume sales rose one point eight percent. So they're getting a lot more dollars compared to the volume they're selling. Uh, right. The the, the 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 price jumped up eighteen point six percent, and the, the sales only went up less than two percent. So okay. uh, so prices rose sixteen point nine percent to two point five two in the four weeks ended July twenty fifth. In the same period, yeah, whatever. Uh, and Q2, uh, pr- prices rose 28%. And, uh, and uh, the dollar sales rose 41.8% versus volume sales at 10.8. Ketchup, which I buy maybe a bottle of ketchup a year. I I don't even use it anymore. It goes bad in my refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyway, prices on ketchup rose 5%. Um, Let's see, instant coffee, which, who drinks instant coffee? Uh, I have no idea. That's nasty. I mean, is it still a thing? I thought that went out of time. Uh, no, I don't like uh, in the late 70s. Whatever. Apparently, yeah. it, <laughs> it, it, it rose uh, 8.4% to $4.95. I guess that's a pound. I'm not sure it doesn't say a unit of measure here. Uh, in the four weeks, ended August 22nd. Um, cheese. Now, we all eat cheese of various cheese kinds. Cheese is rose in price big time. Prices rose 7.3% to $3.87. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, over over those same four weeks, ended August 22nd. Lunch meat rose 8.1% to $5.13, and you can definitely tell that yep. when you go to the store. Oh, yeah, big time. Now, this, I, I don't even know why this is a thing, mm-hmm. but apparently it is a thing, although I hate the way they phrase it. Fresh mm-hmm. plant based meat. Oh ick. <laughs> Gross. Apparently its its prices rose thirteen point eight percent to six dollars and forty four cents. Who so, cares? So so somebody's ick. out there a lot of people are out there paying six and a half bucks a pound for crap. It's plant based stuff. It's not meat. Ew. 
What, whatever. Don't try to tell me it tastes just the same because I know it doesn't. No, it's I'm not going to test it all, but I don't. I know it does not taste the fucking same. It's fucking and, me. And the dude. consistency and the, the right. Ooh. So, yeah, anyway, do, um, do. Uh, men's Nike Air Max shoes. Oh well, fucking Nike. Yeah, of course their fucking shit went. Well, up. their price went up ten and a half percent to one hundred and six dollars. So one hundred and six dollars oh, for a pair of freaking sneakers. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Women, I'm so glad my kids are 20. I don't have to buy their, they buy their own shoes now. W- w- women's Lula Mon yoga pants? Lula Mon, they're leggings and shit. It's a clothing line. All right, whatever. They, they started with leggings. Yo, those yoga pants went up 7.2% to $105. $105 oh, passe. for a pair of freaking yoga pants? $105? Yeah, those, are, those aren't even popular anymore. Those like went, that was like a blip in the pan. Under Armour, uh, yeah. Under Armour sports bras. Oh God! Ro- rose nine nine point four percent to thirty eight dollars and twenty five. <laughs> Under Armour, who can afford that? Somebody that's that can like pay brand that. name, high end shit. How I don't much, buy. How, how much do you pay for a bra? Oh, I don't know. I get them on sale, and it's not an Under Armour brand. It's just a regular bra. It's not a sports bra. But so, it's not. It's not thirty. Know. You're not paying thirty eight dollars a pop. Hell no. No, but <laughs> regular bras, Grim, are thirty dollars. Is that right? Yeah, they're like twenty to thirty dollars. Right, well, these are sports bras. Yeah. I don't know. What I'm the not diff- kidding you either. Well, I don't know what the difference between a sport. <laughs> a, what's the difference between a sports bra and a regular? It's a different style of bra. It's just a sports bra is for like when you're jogging or working out or something. Craft beer. It's kind of like a cut-off tank top but with support, though. You know what uh, I mean? All right, all right. So, so, yeah. so craft beer rose 2%. So that's for a case, uh, $37 a case for craft beer uh, rose wow. 2%. That's, that's not much. That's, yeah, that's, I believe that. That's not. That's not much. Yeah, that's, no, that's not bad. Really. Tra- traditional beer rose 2.7%, uh, but it's only $23.80 a case instead of $37. Uh, major appliances are up three percent. Uh, Louis Vuitton um, handbag. Oh God, man, who can afford that? I don't, no, I don't like, know. That's for rich end people. This article is. Well, who, who? What is that? Well, there's, there's, from? just wait. There's more in there. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, so those handbags rose five percent to fifteen hundred dollars. Who gives a fuck? Who can? No, the average person is not going to pay fifteen hundred dollars for a goddamn purse, dude. <laughs> You know no, what I mean? No, only rich no. fucking people can afford a fifteen dollar hundred. But what the a, but but what the average person is gonna buy? Yeah, is infant formula. Yep. Right. So those prices yep. prices rose four point four percent to twenty dollars and seventy one cents. A Toyota Rav Four rose three percent. Disposable diapers, which I guess you would. I bet you that went up. I'm gonna guess fifteen. Eight point eight percent. Oh, okay. Anyway, either way, seventeen dollars and ninety eight cents for I don't know, it doesn't a say case how many diapers. It doesn't say how many. A box, a case of them. Most people buy them in the big bulk pack, you know. Laundry detergent went up yeah. nine nine point two percent. Wow. Uh, yeah. Bottled water I mean what? I said bottled water rose five point three percent. Yeah. And this one, I, I wish this would rise like a thousand percent, but it, it, it only went up two percent, and that is onions. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because you're allergic to them, Grim. Uh, to people that aren't allergic to onions, they're just fine. We like them; they're good flavory. Anyway, there's a few more but things you, in you, there. You can use garlic in place of it, which is probably better, or, or you know, on par. So that's tons better. Any, anyway, oh, yeah. um. There's a few more things in there if you want to look at them. So, yeah, right. it's, it's pretty much across the board. And I, we talked about last week, the uh, Federal Reserve uh, guy uh, said that he wanted to jack up, he wanted to make sure that the uh, inflation rate was on a constant and steep curve rising up. Well, everything's going up. We've talked about that. We've said this for three months now. Yeah, well, now they're, now they're actually about. admitting. Now they're actually admitting to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, be, be, because they, we, we've known everybody, anybody buying food and stuff has known for quite a while that prices of almost everything has, has been going right. up uh, at, a, at yep. a pretty good clip. But they, but the, but the government would never admit it. 
but but now they the, now they're admitting it because they say, well, we want we want inflation to go up, which is total bullshit. Oh but, yeah, thanks a lot, guy. But but oh, cool. which is total bullshit. They don't actually want that. They're, no, they don't. They're, they're just saying it because they got there's there's no way around it around right. it for them. Exactly. Um, so yeah, whatever. I mean, and you know they're not talking about the fact that the lockdown really was fucked up because it inc- it's so many other things increased. Like, oh, you have to lock down for safety. Okay, well, guess what? Uh, domestic violence has gone up. Sexual assault has gone up. Sexual trafficking has gone up. Suicides. I mean, suicide has gone up. Depression has gone up. Um, you know, people need to be, you know, not certain people need people, okay? It, but not only that, but the people with um, health conditions that need to go to the doctor once a month or whatever. Or need a surgery. Like, I was just talking to someone, a friend of mine, his dad has a terrible hernia. Yeah. And he can't be seen because he doesn't speak English very well. And his wife has to go to the appointments with him. Right. To translate or whatever. Well, he can't go with her because they only will see the patient. They won't let any family members be with them because of COVID. Right, right, right. right. And so then he's like, well, and we were like, well, what? he's going to get in because it's getting worse. It's a hernia. You can't just let that go. Yeah. You know? And he's like, well, they're going to have to do a video call when she's at his at the appointment, when he's at the appointment or whatever. Right. If that's what it takes. But, I mean, so this people had put off dental care. They put off routine medical things. And that is hurting people. It's killing people. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. All of those things we said is killing people. Well, that, well, of course, when they die, then it's attributed to COVID. So Right. And then, okay, <laughs> so there's this really sad story out of Minnesota. Like, it happened like a month ago. This eight-year-old girl was, you know, when the COVID hit, she was with her dad and her stepmom, right? Yeah. Well, then there's a custody agreement with the mom and the dad. They're divorced. What, what, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the mom tried repeatedly to see her daughter. And the court and everybody, she went to the court. She called. I mean, she tried as hard as she could to be able to see her daughter during this COVID lockdown. This yeah. is in Minnesota. Yeah. And they wouldn't allow it because of COVID. Yeah. Guess what? The girl's dead. Because yeah. her step, her dad and her stepmom starved her to death and the mom her actual mom wasn't allowed to see the kid you know right so there you go yeah oh yeah that girl's death is related to covid and all this stupid ass court shit and all this bullshit well we can't do anything right now because court's not in session guess what people all those people that denied that mother access to her kid are responsible for her death. Yeah, every one of them's got blood on Including their hands. Including the, the governor of the state. Sure. Because he put the lockdown in place. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, mean, I, I know that, that here in New Mexico, uh, various business groups have gotten together and and, mm-hmm. and sued the governor. Yeah. But every that time... That happened in Minneapolis. Every time, and there's been, yeah. I don't know, five or six of them here. Uh, every time... It gets pushed out to the to the Supreme Court of New Mexico, and every time the Supreme Court of New Mexico says, "Governor can do whatever she wants," it don't matter. Great. It don't matter how bad she's destroying all everybody's lives, everybody's businesses. It Is it a Democratic governor, Grim? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Huge, I huge hugely know. Democratic. She's she's what? like she's like the up and coming Nancy Pelosi. Just like Evers here in Wisconsin. Yeah. Dumb as fuck, dude. I mean, seriously. He's listening to, I don't know who he listens to. I don't, it's it's mind-boggling, dude. Oh, yeah. It's mind-boggling. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, I'm they, surprised they, that. They act in concert. Fun. They all work together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, let me, like, let, me, uh, let me cover this story here. Okay. All right. Uh, since we were already talking about the prices okay. of everything going up. Yep. Um, and then we'll do another music set. But uh, uh, this is on activistpost.com. 
uh, Brandon Smith. The the economy continues to unravel despite all these stimulus me measures, or maybe, as I say, adding into his thing here, because of all the stimulus measures. Uh, but that's a whole other story. Uh, since the pandemic lockdowns were first implemented in the U.S., I have been more concerned with government at and central bank response than the virus itself. Me too, buddy. Uh, as I have noted in past <laughs> articles, the pandemic restrictions and subsequent economic and social crisis events they help create will cause far more deaths than COVID-19 ever will. Not only that, but the actions of the Federal Reserve continue to con the American public into believing that there is some kind of plan to stop the crash that they engineered. The only agenda of the Fed is to increase the pain in the long term. They have no intention of actually preventing any disaster, and they never have, if you look back to the uh, 1929 uh, collapse. All right. Uh, this is evidenced in, in comments by voting members of the Fed, including Neil Cash Carey, or carry your cash on out of there, who recently argued for the enforcement of hard lockdowns for at least six weeks in the U.S., all because the U.S. savings rate was going up, meaning because Americans are saving more in order to protect themselves from the economic fallout, Cash Carry thinks we should be punished with an economic shutdown that would force us to spend whatever we have been able to save. Do you see how that works? Yes, I do. Fed members and government officials demand hard lockdowns, depleting public savings and destroying small businesses. Then the public has to beg the Fed and the government for more and more stimulus measures so that they can survive. Right. The, the people in the system become dependent on a single point of support fiat money creation and welfare yet the evidence suggests that this strategy is failing to do much of yeah. anything except stall the inevitable for a very short time right if the goal was really to reduce the pain of the pandemic as much as possible then the strategy should be to keep the economy as open as possible only if you were logical and made sense and let the virus run its freaking course by initiating lockdowns, all we are doing is extending the economic damage over the span of years instead of months. We can deal with the comparatively minimal deaths associated with this virus. We cannot handle the disaster that is about to befall the financial system. Right. No, People we, are not ready. We can't handle it. 1929 is going to look like the 1920s. <laughs> Roaring 20s. Yeah, uh, anyway. well... Yeah, the, the small business sector appears to be the most fragile. Of course, they are. They they have the, the, the least leeway available to them. Uh, the, the most fragile element of the economy right now. The PPP loans that were supposed to shore up small businesses failed miserably, with data showing only 13 to 19% of applicants getting a loan of any kind. Over 64% of all small businesses that received a loan of that little 13.9 to 13 to 19%. So 64% of those that got a loan are also worried about being approved for loan forgiveness. So they got these loans, told they were going to uh -huh. be forgiven, and now it's like, right. yeah, maybe not. Uh, no. Uh, and, on second thought, you might have to pay that back. Right. In other words, of the few small business owners that got the PPP loan, more than half do not have the ability to pay the loan back if right. they end up not qualifying for exemption. Oh, which, my God. Come which they on. probably won't. The problem, oh, my the, God. The problem does not seem to be affecting the corporate sector, however. International companies are enjoying incredible cash infusions from the Fed through overnight loans, zero interest loans, by the way, as well as Fed stimulus propping up stock markets, at least for now. Tech companies in particular are enjoying a rush of investment as the assumption in the day trading world is that the central bank will not allow these companies to fail. 
No. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. But stock markets today do not reflect the health of our system. No, in, they do not. In any way. Stock tickers are a placebo, a Pavlovian trigger for the public, a tool to make people believe that the situation is improving merely because share value because share values are going up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not For the, the case. rich motherfuckers. Anyway, there's a bunch more to this. A bunch more to the story, and uh, it's really a good read. Uh, I, I think you guys should take some time to check it out. It's over there on Actors Post, uh, and uh, <laughs> Brandon Smith. <laughs> Brand, Brandon Smith's a really good author, so we knew it was going to fail miserably. Oh, we did. We did. And, and as soon as they they printed out the, those uh, those first three trillion six, stimulus checks, well, not even the checks. It wasn't. It, said, it was all the money going to the banks. All that money was flooded into the banks, and that was done overnight. You had to wait. Oh, another, yeah, that's right. You, you yep. had, you, the people. Then uh, they did the stimulus check. Yeah, after waiting like <laughs> six, eight, six, eight weeks, they, they said, all right, here's a, right. Here's, a, here's a little pittance, $1,200. Don't spend it all in one place. Uh, right, <laughs> which, and I can tell you for a fact, Yeah. they're printing fresh money. Because I got some money from the ATM like a week or uh, last week. Yeah. That shit was brand fucking new, dude. Oh, yeah. Brand new. I mean, we're talking, you could hardly even pull it, you know, get them apart. Oh, well more than a year. I worked at a bank. They were brand new. That was brand new money. Yeah. Oh, you that wasn't old circulated money. Yeah, that yeah. was brand freshly printed money. Yeah, you brand can always new. tell. Ben Wass says entire G- ben says entire GDP for a year gone. Uh, for for many years. It's an yeah, entire GDP. Many years. It's been like twenty six trillion or something like that. It's some kind of right. crazy amount. It's yeah. it's, it's freaking outrageous. And, it's, and there's, it's there's the you know, the only way the only way to fix it is to collapse the entire system. Which, yeah, and that's what they're doing though. Well, that's, they that's want to usher coming. in their new uh, digital currency or whatever the fuck oh, they yeah. oh, call yeah. it. Oh yeah. All right, well, we're going to play some tunes here. Okay, let's do that. This is a new one from a favorite around here at RLM. BMFS. Enjoy. I want to <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Billy Strings there, uh, dust in a baggie. That was a request by um, who requested that? I forget. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know who would have requested that. Well, it wasn't you? No, it was somebody uh, here in the chat. Might have been Ben Wall. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I, I forget. Uh, or JJ's. I, I forget. Anyway. Uh, dust in a baggie there. Uh, uh, so I, I started I started the uh, recording a little uh, early into that, but I think it'll be fine. I don't think that's uh, copyrighted. I think it's okay. I don't think that's copyrighted material. Anyway, before that, no, uh, no. before before that, we had Dirty Honey doing "Break You," uh, locked down live at the Viper Room. No. When it, was that? Uh, August fourteenth. Oh, so they're like a new band. No, no, they're not a new band. Um, they're, I, I, I kind of think no, I don't I, think I, I know them. I've played some. I've played. I've played some Dirty Honey here before. Yeah, I'm sure, but anyway, that was a uh, you know, lockdown live presented by KLOS, but, the Viper Room in oh, LA. Oh, the Frog request. Oh, the Frogger. Okay, Frog. Oh, right, thanks, Frog. All right, and before hey, another BMF BMFS fan, and we kicked it off with BMFS uh, Billy oh. motherfucking strings doing Watch It Fall, which uh, if you didn't listen to the lyrics of that tune, uh, go back and, and play it. It's on the it's YouTube good. there. Uh, yeah. you'll, you'll be impressed by the uh, man's songwriting abilities. Yes, uh, because, and it's a perfect song for these times that we're in. Oh, certainly. Right now. I mean, I don't know. Okay, Graham, I'm just going to ask, how familiar are you with World War One? Not very. 
<laughs> okay, but you know about the Western Front, right? I I, I know of the, the phrase. Okay. So basically what that was was a battle on, in a field, okay? So you got the fucking English on one side, and you got the Germans on the other side. And I don't, I mean... I, I've been watching some movies. I watched a movie the other day, or it was actually a series. It wasn't a movie. It was a series, mini-series type thing. And it was about the Western Front in World War One, And it was it was from two different perspectives. It was from the, the English guy's perspective and the German guy's perspective, right? Okay. And just seeing how similar their lives were, right? And these kids are, okay, the one kid, he's 17, and you had to be 19 to sign up. So they're at the recruiting, you know, where you go to sign up to join the war, right? Yeah, yeah. And he tells, the, the guy says, how old are you? He's like, I'm 18. He goes, don't you mean 19? He goes, yeah, I mean 19. And they stamp the paper, even though he's really 17, right? Right. Right, they didn't want, these were boys. And then in the movie, or the show, a 16-year-old kid signs up, and you're just thinking, oh, my fucking God, dude. And he looks so young and so, you know what I mean? Sure. And this was, this was how it was, though, okay? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And so what happened on the Western Front was it was some – this, this field was important for some reason. I'd have to do research to find out why. It must have been a border or something, right? Right. And basically it's a field. Where they keep moving back, they move up, then they move back, then they move up. And they did this for like four years, dude. In the midst of all this, thousands of lives are lost. These young boys that go there, they have no idea what they're fucking getting into. At all. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just like, this. It, okay, so what happened one after one battle, they called a ceasefire. So both sides could come and get their dead and wounded. You know what I mean? Okay. And it's so bizarre because they're working side by side where at one moment they were trying to kill each other. And now in this moment, they're you know what I mean? They're helping each other clear these people out, out of the field. Yeah. It's just it, it just makes you like go, oh, wow. You know what I mean? It's just. They, and then at one point, like towards the end, which is towards the end of the battle of the movie and everything, of the show. Yeah. They're, going, they're like, what are we doing this for? You know what I mean? This makes no sense at all. Right. And it doesn't. It didn't. And it's just, I don't know. There's a lot of good movies out there on Amazon Prime regarding World War Two, World War One, and World War Two right now. Yeah. Um, and the the one I was I'm talking about is called The Passing Bells. Okay. And it's it's not a U.S. film or show. It's a BBC, I think, okay. or a U.K. based All right. All right. Uh, production. All right. Anyway, um, pretty good. I mean, it gives you a firsthand account of what these guys went through, you know, um, mm -hmm. and just even what the the families went through, you know, and just it it was really really compelling. And it, I just I just wanted to pass it along, I guess. But just my point of this is. This war makes no fucking sense, dude. No, it uh, well, it makes sense if you look at it from the right perspective, right. being that of the banksters. The banksters want the war. The banksters want they all the do. countries to go into big debt to them, and yep. so so they'll strike up a war, and yep. then the, the the countries will sell it to their people as these guys are bad, they're doing bad stuff to us or to our friends, so we got to go over there and help them out. And so in, right. order, in order to do that, we'll we'll take all the and and this yeah. this corona nonsense is is, base, is the same thing. Right. Uh, yep. Yep. Oh, so. all quiet on the Western Front, Ben. Yes, that is. And there's a movie of that too. If you guys have not read that book or seen that movie, I would highly suggest that. Definitely, um, yeah. watch that or read that book. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it, it, it grim. Okay, so when these guys are signing up, you know, 
they're all feeling all patriotic and all, I'm going to do my duty. And they actually thought it was going to be like a, a month long thing. Right. They had no idea it was going to be four years of brutal shit. You know what I mean? Sure. They sign up all gung ho. I'm doing this for my country and my, you know, queen and all this shit. Yeah, duty. You know what I mean? Duty on our country. Duty. Right. And you end up going over there. You're, you're in this war. You're 17. Yeah, well, you know, look at uh, you know. I mean, come on, uh, I, you haven't even lived your life yet. I well, mean, you know, look look at the uh, Revolutionary War, the Civil War, right. War of eighteen twelve. They were yeah. they were fourteen, thirteen year old, they're twelve year old out there, you know, shooting at people that were yeah. also thirteen, fourteen year old. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, can you imagine that? No, no, no. I can't. I can't imagine sending a child into an environment like that. Right, but, uh, but they was... signed up. Yeah, you know, and they did. They wanted to do it. You sure. Know? I sure. mean, it seems. I mean, you know, they were boys. You know. Yeah. I think there were some girls that pulled as boys, but that that's like a minuscule percentage, right? Yeah. So that could have happened too. Right. You know? Right. And, um, they, you know, they were young. They were kids. They were kids. They were just little kids. Right. And it's just so, when you think about. But, but they're, you know, mm -hmm. their parents pushed them into it, whatever. The devastation, that, though, that, but in the World War One instance, like the show that I watched, the, the moms were like, how can you send our, to the, 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 the dad, how can you, we send our child a way to do this, but you know, not, when I was saying, I even said out loud, I'm like, once they're a certain age, you can't do nothing to stop them. If that's what they want to do, there's nothing you can do to stop them. Right. You know, there's nothing you can do. And, you know, and they would they would say, uh, if you don't do this, you're a coward. You're a coward, and they would be the whole town would shun them. Right. And the family, they'd yeah. be like, your son didn't sign up. You know why not? Yeah. You know, it's like everyone else did. You know, exactly. that's how it works. That's how this shit works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how they get you. You know, and I, I don't like the fact that my kids had to do the selective service registration. You know, right. I, well, they didn't actually have to, but. No, they didn't, but <laughs> you have to, or you'll be harassed. Uh, yeah, maybe. You'll be, it's a crime not to, isn't it, Grim? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, you get fined or something. There's got to be some <clears throat> some penalty for not doing it. Maybe. And, you know, the problem with patriotism and the whole generational um, military thing. Right. It, it, that's been ingrained into our, our psyche as Americans. In, sure. in, you know, not just America, but all over the world. It's been ingrained into your psyche that you have to fight for your, you know, the people that control your land, your your country, or whatever. Right. You know, um, you're doing the dirty work for these, but they 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 trick you into doing it, telling you it's for it's it's to pr protect freedom. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And you're doing your duty, and you should feel proud, you know, to be doing this. But you, they don't—they lie to them. And this has been going on since the dawn of time, since the beginning of this country. Yeah. They lie to them. They get sure. them sucked into this mindset, and then it's a generational thing. Well, you know, your grandfather fought, like the the guy that got picked for Vietnam, right? Yeah. Well, you know your grandfather was a World War II hero. So you're just basically, you know, get, living up to the family's legacy. Right. Or whatever. You know what I mean? You should feel proud that you're doing this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it, it's ingrained into our heads from a young age. It is. I come from no a doubt military about it. family, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know about you, but I come from a military family on both sides, my mom and my dad's side. Uh, you know, yeah. I, well, my 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 stepdad, if I call him that, um, was a uh, Navy idiot. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I, my uncle, my mom's oldest brother, he was a chief petty officer in the Navy. Yeah, but he started. He, you know when he went into the Navy, 
No. The day after he graduated high school. Jesus. Yep, he was in the Navy 25 years, dude. Well, one hell hole to the next. Yep. <laughs> but that was in 1961 or whatever, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's, and he, yep. So they A shipped, lot of guys did that back then. So he was at McMurdo Station for six months. Why? They were doing something down there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. He was stationed at McMurdo Station in Antarctica for six fucking months. Crazy. I remember being a kid. I was like, I don't know, six or seven. I don't fucking. He was there, right? Yeah. And I just thought that was. I. I just. It freaked me out thinking that I had a relative in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then when he came back, you know, the whole family had a big gathering and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he knew that I collected stamps, right? It was my dad. Right. That was our thing, you know, posting stamps. Okay. And he brings back this, this little ch a check box, you know, the box that you get with checks, you know? Where yeah, you get checks yeah, in the yeah, yeah. Full of these Antarctic stamps. Oh. I'm like, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was a weird kid at that age. You know what I mean? You're still a weird but, kid. Oh, you know, I know. But anyway, um... It was just cool that I knew somebody that had been to Antarctica. Yeah. I mean, even though it was for military reasons. You know what I mean? Right, right. Well. But still, I thought that was a cool... Because how many people can say that? You know? Uh, not I mean, that many. Seriously, how many people can say that? You know? I yeah. know someone that was lived in Antarctica for six fucking months. I mean... Right. You know? Yeah. And I'm not... You know, and what they... It sucks about Antarctica because all of the military... The major military players in the world have bases there or whatever. Yeah. People don't think about that. But, you know, China's down there. The U.S. is down there. Russia's down there. What the fuck are they doing down there, dude? Uh, playing with the aliens, I guess. Makes I don't know. You wonder, right? Yeah. You know, and when McMurdo, or not McMurdo, well, it's not called McMurdo anymore, by the way. They changed the name. Because this was back in, like, the 70s, it was called McMurdo. You know, it was just a station then. Right. That Maybe they were building it. Maybe that's why he was there. Because uh, it was just like a remote station. Maybe they had to build, like, a base. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when they first were down there, like, they'd ship, they'd, they'd put old military equipment and old, like, used oil barrels... And they'd put them on a ship, right? Uh huh. And they'd take it down to Antarctica, and then guess what they did? What they did? I don't know. They dumped all that shit in the ocean. Oh. They've been doing that forever, dude. Sure. I, think, I don't know if they ever stopped. I think they're still doing that. Screw the world, basically. Like they're like, oh, we don't need this jeep anymore. <clears throat> Dump it off in the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty sick, dude. Yeah. I mean, they. All the military bases do it, not just the U.S. one. Sure, sure. They figure, oh, it's so cold, nothing doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Right, right, but right. But when you think about how long they've been there and been doing this, they've been there, what, 40 years, dude. They've been at doing least. This. At least. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Yeah. That, that's insane. Yeah. I mean, and what are they really doing down there, dude? I was saying I was probably playing with the aliens. Yeah, I yeah. I just I wonder why are all, why is it so important to have all these countries these major player countries have bases down there? You know. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever, have you ever thought about it? Like, I mean, most people don't even think about Antarctica. They don't. They're like, oh, it's, it's Antarctica. They just don't give it another thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I there was a movie. I think it was just called Virus. Um. I saw that. Yeah, with Sean Connery? Yeah, I, there's been several type of those kind of movies. Yeah. Well, anyway, the, it was, the Antarctica was the only unaffected continent. Uh, okay. And so the people it's that... It's so cold, right? Uh, whatever. Uh, oh, the, that, no, yeah. no traffic in and out, uh, so cold, mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. So all the people that were there, they had to stay there. And, and of course, you know, there, there was no more new supplies coming in or whatever. And then they... Uh, we're trying yeah. to figure out the, the, this thing. This nuclear bomb was going to go off in mm -hmm. New York, and they had this submarine. Anyway, so so they showed all the various 
uh, peoples and, and bases down there, um, in, you know, in a fictional manner, of course, but um, right. But but it was it was quite interesting uh, so. seeing that, and and, and it, you know, it also kind of you know, if if there was a real virus that was actually killing everybody in the world, right. um, then then maybe Antarctica would be the place to be. Uh, Maybe. At least as long as you had supplies, because um, you couldn't go out. Right, because you, you can't really get anything. It's really hard to get supplies there. They have to fly them in, or they have to boat them in. Right, and and so you couldn't go out for supplies because everything was contaminated. Right. Yeah. And and, and so, uh, if anyway. supplies would run out, you'd be screwed. Right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, they they have some greenhouses and stuff down there, but. Oh well, now they do. Oh, but. oh, then then came the part of there's only uh, there's not that many women down there. Okay. Okay, but if they if the people that live there are the only ones living left on Earth, then the women down oh, there. Yeah, I saw that movie. The, the women down there are going to have to be the they ones have babies. to have to have babies to repopulate. So they have to have sex with like all the different dudes. Yeah, they had like they had like a they had they had like a lottery system, you know. Oh, there, there's, no. and, and, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. I mean it's, no, it, 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 it was it was an interesting and yet bizarre film. It's not beyond the realm of comprehension, is it? No, I mean, no, no. And I actually you know, I, they're I think, trying to make us all AI now. I, I think if you're they're interested, trying to implant fucking computers into our brains now. I, I think what half human, half Borg. Fuck you, dude. Something like that. But I think if you're interested, yeah. the films either on YouTube or Tubi or Amazon. Okay. My, yeah, my, it's, a, it's a Sean Connery. So yeah, it's you know, an, old, an older film. It's, it's older, right? Yeah. I do remember that once you brought up the the women and the babies thing, I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I got I got three stories I want to buzz through real quick here. All right, um, and they're all pertinent, I guess. Speaking of babies and having them, <laughs> wear a mask while having sex. Oh yeah, okay, su- Ew, su- yeah. Suggests Canada's top doctor. Now, I don't know, is there a bunch of ugly women in Canada? Is that what... <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, so it says, sex can be complicated during the time of corona. Oh, God. Stop kissing and wear a mask while having sex to protect yourself from contracting the coronavirus. Yeah. Don't now, kiss while wearing a mask. Now, now, my thing is, are you not living with this woman? The, uh, <laughs> no kidding. Uh, well, you know, unless no. it's like a one-night stand. Yeah, yeah, okay. So and don't kiss her. So I guess they're basically saying have sex with whores that wear masks. Right, and and I did see that they 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 suggest doing like not uh, what do they call it missionary style. Right, do doggy style. Do doggy <laughs> style, so you're not face to face. Or the, or the reverse cowgirl. Or whatever <laughs> style, but any style where you're not face to face. All right. So uh, according to Dr. Teresa Tam. Uh, there's a very low chance of catching corona bologna from se- <laughs> from semen or vaginal fluid, but sexual activity. You know? <laughs> I, I, I guess, but sexual activity with a new partner does increase the risk of catching the virus, especially mm-hmm. when kissing. Oh my oh, god! Oh, kissing is bad. Kissing oh god. is bad. Yeah, no, oh god! Yeah, <laughs> can't right. have that. <laughs> Doggy style only. All right. <laughs> Okay. I guess so. Okay. Wow. Now this one, if you're a parent with children, <laughs> might be a bit disturbing. <laughs> CDC prepares parents for possible separation from children in emergency school sleepovers. Uh, what? Okay. No fucking way is my kid staying overnight at the fucking school without me being there. That's why I say this could be dis- All right. dis- dis- could be disturbing for parents this is disturbing. Parents with children at home that go to school. As this chil- is Babylon B, I bet. No, 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 it's not. It's not? Are no. you kidding me? No, this is real. Um, What's, what? It's OI, OI, new, O-Y-E News. O-Y-E News. Under the tyranny, hell no. Under the tyranny heading, <laughs> so as children all over the United States prepare for return to school, the CDC has published a, a pretty little infographic about a, a, and fact sheet. The infographic suggests 
parents should prepare their children for a potential sleepover at school. No, and they no, got no, to, no, no. And they no, got this no, little no, ABC no. Uh, infographic here. It says, ask how you would be reunited with your child in an emergency what? evacuation. Uh, bring oh bring God. extra medication, special food, or supplies your child would need if you were separated overnight. Complete a, oh my God! C- complete a backpack and card and tuck one into your child's backpack and your wallet. Uh, this is put out by the CDC, so it's emergency.cdc.gov/children. Uh, Dude, I have a massive headache right now. From this, got a massive headache. All right. So I no, seriously, I'm just saying. I, I seriously did because it's so fucking fucked up. Uh, I know it is. I know it is. But the, so fucked up. Like, but but yeah, you know, I, you know that the CDC pretty much took over all renters in the United yeah. States this week. Right. They they took over control. Yeah. Of all rental properties, saying that that no nobody could be evicted from their rental right. properties. Wow. Uh, d- yeah, during, I know. I heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. So. The CDC, of course, just like in your state, your your state uh, health commissioner has more power than anybody else in your state's government. Uh, just like fraud chief, right. fraud chief well, does they're, for, they're, the, for the U.S. Yep, yep. And yep. just like the 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 head of the city county health department here in Eau Claire, that the city council and, she, and the mayor is listening to, and the school administrator is letting this per one person. Say no fall sports for Eau Claire North Memorial. Guess what? The private school, Regis, yeah. they're playing football. But, ah. oh, but, oh, but you know what their idea is? Oh, just play it in the spring. It's like, hello, football is not played in the spring anywhere in the state. So the only two teams going to be playing football in the spring is to be Eau Claire North and Memorial. That does not fucking work, okay? No. And this lady... This head of the health department here, yeah, I know her, and she is just, I i don't know. All right, well, let me she go is, on with this a little bit here. Anyway, oh, sorry. That's all right. Sorry, it's just, it, you were touched on that subject. I, I know. It, it's, 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 highly, it's highly disturbing. These health people are in control is what you're saying. You know me- it's a medical, medical tyranny. Yes. Medical tyranny. So uh, it says, what exactly are we preparing our children for? It certainly seems a little excessive to be preparing children for, eva- for, for evacuations and overnight stays simply because of a virus that is comparable to the flu in severity that kills 0% of children. Oh, my freaking God. The, the info, infographic is not directly related to the pandemic, but it has been added to the teachers' resources on the CDC website in the past few weeks. So I repeat, what are we preparing children for? Um, the, the, the infographics here in this article, uh, you can look at it for yourself. You can download it, uh, share it with people that you know that have uh, children. It, it's, like I said, it's, high, it, it's disturbing stuff. Yeah, it is. I mean, okay, so one of the biggest problems that's going on right now, we talked, or Graham talked about it, I believe, uh, recently, I think last Saturday, it, they're really they're cracking down or trying to crack down apparently on child sex trafficking. Right. And I don't know how you guys, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, don't have kids or their kids are adults, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, and they don't think about this problem, okay, or this issue. And I yeah. get that. Yeah. If you, but what I'm, what I want to say is that it is a huge freaking problem, okay? Sure. The child trafficking, the sex trafficking of children is terrible here in this country. In certain parts of this country, it's really bad, okay? Okay. And it's been going on for a very long time with high-powered people, okay? Right. And now they're starting to try to crack down on these, this shit. And that whole Pizzagate thing... You guys can just blow it off like it's not real or it's propaganda or it's a Hillary, against Hillary or whatever or against the Democrats. No, it's it it, ha- it happened. Okay. Absolutely. You ha- if you if you just scratch the surface and go, oh no, that didn't happen. Then you really are ignorant and you don't know what happened. Okay. So don't just sit there and go, oh, PizzaGate didn't happen. No, 
it was a real thing. Okay? Right. And Hollywood has been doing it for a, since its beginning. Okay? Yeah. Since the beginning of Hollywood, they have been abusing and using children. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. Since the very beginning. Now just look at Shirley Temple. You know, she was fucking abused. Look at Shirley Temple. Even go be, be, beyond that, before that. Yeah, but that's somebody everybody knows. Right. Right. She, exactly. She, she yeah. was. It, she was one. Yep. Right. So. I mean, the list goes on and on. And yes, this. Okay, the child sex trafficking has been going on in Hollywood. The child sex trafficking trafficking has been going on a long time. Look up Nebraska's history of child sex trafficking. Look up Boys Town. Right. Okay. Right. All this stuff's been going on. Un, right under our noses, you guys. It happens For right generations. here. Happens right here in New Mexico. Yep. Because uh, you're, you're well, right on the border, Grim. Well, that and, and also Epstein, uh, Jeffrey Epstein has a has a ranch about right a few miles from where I live. Right. And yeah, uh, he yeah. has a ranch. He had a ranch in New Mexico. I think he's still. Well, I think it, it he's I, still. Well, he's still goes to now, his. It's still part of his estate. It's still his estate. Yep. Yep, shit went down there. Shit, I mean, and that's just one person. He's oh, yeah. Rich fucker. That, he, there's a bunch of them out there. Oh, sure, sure. You know, I mean, it's it's really sick, you guys. I mean, there's even stories. Uh, I don't really want to say this because it's just so... Where people will have a child purposely to sell them to a, someone fucking rich, dude. Right. And it's it's so fucking beyond comprehension. I get that. I know. That's I didn't even want to say. You know what I mean? Right. But it's so it's so terrible. You know. Um, it it's it's really bad. And we're just like even like the feds are just scratching the surface on all this shit, dude. Right. You know what I mean? This started hitting the fan when the Epstein ship hit the fan. That's when it really became like a really big topic. Yeah. Which it's about fucking time because there's been kids that have grown up in Hollywood that have tried to raise the alarm on this for years, generations, people. Okay. Right. And no one listened to them. No one listened to them. Annette Funicello. From the original Mickey Mouse Club? Yeah, yeah. All those kids in the original Mickey Mouse Club? Oh, sure. Were sexually abused. Oh, even whatever they got now is, as yep. part of as part of the uh, Mickey Mouse Club. I think it's still going on, right? No, it's not. They, it's not, no. Oh, okay. It hasn't been for a while. But as far as I know, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't pay attention to that shit. But when my kids were little, when they were babies, it was still there. But I don't, I haven't seen anything regarding that. But, oh, yeah, Britney Spears, like Ben's talking about Britney Spears. Mm-hmm. She was Illuminati. Her parents sold her out. And then guess what happened? She couldn't handle it. She went fucking nuts. And then, like, like once she was, like, over 18, like, her parents didn't have any control over, right? Yeah. Well, then she was in the Illuminati. They knew she was. And... um. Yeah, the Mickey Moose Club. Say, don't make me part of this shit. <laughs> no, I know. Not, no, I don't want nothing to do with that. But no, 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 no. Anyway, um, she went crazy, and her then her parents had to intervene again on her behalf. Well, guess what? It was their fault. Right. Because they signed up. They, they signed her up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she was lucky. She's one of the lucky ones. She's actually, I don't know, I don't think she's in it no more. I think she's out totally because she's not doing any music anymore right now. Okay. Well, well her uh, music wasn't really music anyway. No. It, it was, was all fucking digital. Whatever. Uh, yeah, anyway, let me uh, not, yeah. uh, let me hit this last story real quick here. Um, okay. We only got a few minutes. Uh, so yeah. uh, this is on RT.com. Inject first, talk later. Uh, Australia considers restricting unvaccinated people, but walks back on making COVID jabs, uh, not COVID-19 jabs mandatory. 
And I'll just tell you what it says, basically, is that uh, they were, they had full-on planned to make everybody in Australia uh, be injected with whatever they come up with uh, as, as far as a vaccine for this nonsense, which you can't vaccine against, vaccinate against. But they've decided to do it a different way. And what they're going to do is what we've talked about a lot. Um, yep. they, they are going to say no travel. You can't do this. No shopping. No, no going into public buildings. No school for kids. Nothing. You can't do anything outside of your own home without this injection. So they don't have to mandate the injection. All they got to do is what they're doing down there is restrict everybody from doing anything unless they are vaccinated and can prove it. And, can and prove you know it. what that sounds like to me? Communism. Oh, worse than communism. This, this is freaking tyranny at the, at the top here. Yeah. Um, so th this, <laughs> that's what this is all about. That's what they're talking about there. And do you think if Australia's Say, thinking this, saying this, that it's not going to happen here. Do you think it's not coming this direction? I don't Do think you... it'll happen here. I, oh, I, they, I they, know that in Australia. They've already pretty they're... much done it. They've already, with the masks. They've done the same okay. thing right. with the mask. But, okay. no. you, can't okay. go, you can't go but anywhere. This is Australia. Or... I know, we but. We talked about this last week. But but I'm just it's saying. Australia. The I... motherfuckers got guns. They're just buried or whatever. I, I, but I'm just saying. They've already done it here, except they've done yes, it. Yes, they have. They've done yeah. it with masks. You yes, can't go did. to the store right. without a mask. You can't fly on a plane. You can't uh, go in go into but, any but, public. No, I'm just going to tell you what my. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do an experiment. Okay, and I well, did it. I go into Quick Trip with no mask. I go into other stores with no mask. All right? right, all right. They do not refuse me service. They do not tell me to leave, even though there's a sign. Up in the quick trip above the cashier that says, you must wear a mask per the government mandate. Yeah. You know what? They still fucking waited on me, dude. Yeah. Well, they, they're, I mean, not, well they, I, they're not going to deny your money. They're going to take your money. Well, you well, got we'll, a mask on or not. Well, we'll and I fucking had, they, no one said shit to me. <laughs> no one said a goddamn thing. All right. All right. All right. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand. I understand. Uh, but I'm just saying. I'm so like annoyed by this whole thing. I'm just saying they are going to push it here. I know they're going to try. All right. They're already right. talking about mandatory vaccinations. Yeah. And this uh, COVID pass or whatever. Yeah. It's COVID like, pass, right? Yeah. Fuck you. You know what? So many people. I don't know how to word this, but I know. I I hope. I feel. I think. That more people are against it than they're for it. Let's hope. They're just not being vocal about it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, let's hope they get vocal. I hope so. All right. Well, we I don't do know our... about getting vocal, but I don't know what, you know what I mean? Get vocal local. I just hope yep. they resist. <laughs> yeah, resist. Get... All right. Yes, definitely resist. Anyway, we got to do our last set here. So. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we're going to kick it off with a little bit of UFO. Not right. from McMurdo. <laughs> Oh, Black Betty, yeah! <laughs> That's Stoner Trey doing Black Betty there for us all. All right, before that, we had Trampled by Turtles uh, doing a track called Alone. Uh, before that was a Benoit request, Sturgill Simpson, Long White Line. That was uh, some countryfied stuff right there. And we kicked it off with UFO, Only You Can Rock Me. Uh, there's a purpose for that, and you'll have to look it up on your own. Uh, anyway, anyway, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been a good time. I had, uh, had a lot of fun here tonight, as we always do, or as I always yes. do. Uh, and hopefully you did as well. Uh, hopefully. Uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, got anything else? Uh, no, just kick ass, you know? I mean, not literally kick ass. Kick ass as a human. That's what I mean, you know? Yeah. Like, figuratively, not go out there and kick ass. The actual ass. <laughs> kick, kick. It's a, it's a metaphor. Kick mental ass. Yeah. Do, you know, kick ass in some way. Be your badass self. That's what I'm trying to say. Go on with your bad self. Yeah. All right. Um, Be on. Rock on with your bad self. All right. So, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, the Dark Table yep. is tomorrow. Flash and Grammy at 2 p.m. Eastern. 
I'll be on yes, Sunday. Indeedy. I'll be on Sunday at normal time, which is noon Eastern with the Blues. Hal Anthony will follow me at 3 p.m. Eastern behind the woodshed. Check the schedule. The figurative woodshed. Yes, indeed. The or men- metaphor, or whatever you want. The or men- literal. The I men- don't know. The, you know there the, is actually a woodshed somewhere. The mental woodshed. All right. Uh, all right so, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, everybody have a great weekend, and yep. um, thanks for everything. Thank you all for tuning in. You're awesome. You are. Peace. Peace.